Hi, and welcome to the Health Begins with Moms show. I am Dorit Pavanov, your host. On this podcast, I will share insights and interviews on health, parenting, and explore the question of what does it take to thrive as women, wives, and mothers. Now, let's get going with today's episode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another interview in the Health Begins With Mom podcast. This is Dorit Palmanov, your host. Uh, today, I'm chatting with Marla Stacks, who is a highly trained yoga instructor and founder of Conscious Connections course for recently certified yoga instructors. She trains the new or floundering yoga teacher on how to create thriving conscious businesses using a formula to master abundance with their newfound yogic wisdom. She specializes in mindfulness-based stress reduction techniques, yoga for therapeutics, angel yoga for children, and in hands-on or off Reiki and Satnam, which is in truth, ancient arts of healing modalities. Marla's mantra for medicine and Kriya plans the mind of toxic thoughts based approach as a yogi whisperer offers a nurturing style that brings comfort, support, inner peace, and compassion to her teachings. Her gloom to bloom <laughs> in three to five minutes is at the forefront of her passion to bring more conscious light into the world. And most importantly, I think the, the most important job, Marla, that you do is being a mom of four kids. So hi, Marla. With that, I welcome you to the show. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So before we dive into uh, today's, um, I think it's going to be a very kind of deep conversation, uh, which I love. Um, before we get into that, can you share with us what are you loving about being a mom right now? I am loving the quality of my relationships with my children. And they all are older in a way, so there's things that I can look back on and say, wow, if I was doing some of these things with them when they were younger, maybe they would be in a different place. Um, I started the yoga practice after the birth of my first daughter, and then I kind of moved in and out and never really did a solid practice. Um, so the thing that I think I was always working on was building relationship and trust with my children. And, How old are your kids? and my kids now are 17, 19, 23, and 25. A oh, few, wow. A few of oh, them wow. had birthdays. Yeah. So, so I love uh, bringing yoga and mindfulness into my life and to bring it where places are asking for it. And my children not necessarily um, were asking for it. So when I was getting more into it, I would just uh, be as conscious as possible to keep shining a little bit of the light of the things that I'm learning and have been learning with them. Um, and so often I would write down, whenever I would take a workshop or something, I would write down what, what would I want most, and it would be you know, to have good communication and good relationships with my children and, and my husband. And so I think a lot of the things, that's the foundation of everything. So my years of work and seeking the truth of who I am have helped me cultivate that relationship first with myself, and it is just going into that direction where, yes, they're older, the kids, but also just receiving and allowing for relationships to be as they are, as opposed to pushing away something that maybe I don't like in myself or maybe a quality that I would find very difficult at times with having a certain type of child. Um, I feel that I'm a person that is always looking to create you know, the relationships with my family. I strong. love that. I love that. I love that. And I think that's what it's all about, right? Uh, I think motherhood is a lifelong relationship building skill. I totally, I, I'm totally there with you. Although my kids are still young. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. So can you um, share with the audience, uh, wh why did you decide to become a yoga and meditation teacher? Well, I guess I would say that first question you asked me about my children, um, that is what brought me to yoga and meditation. And it was 
like I said, after the birth of my first daughter, I, I nursed her the first year and I moved in and out of what was going on and feeling sometimes a little bit lost or just really didn't have any true direction. I was the first one of my college friends and high school friends and really the first one that I knew um, who had kids, a couple of cousins, but I, they didn't live close. And so I babysat when I was younger, but there was really no direction on how to do this, this thing um, of being a mother. And so I love uh, the things that you're bringing into light and just knowing that we've moved through a lot. So in those days, I, I definitely had some stressful moments. And I, uh, I guess about a year after my daughter um, was when I was no longer nursing, I went away and I had this connection and I took some yoga classes. And from that moment, I, I moved in and out of yoga. And I knew every time I would take a class, I would feel more relaxed. Yeah. I didn't really know that there was a philosophy. I just knew that we would do some poses and some practices. And it wasn't for a while longer until I started to hear some different readings and started to be exposed to even more um, more of the wisdom that can come. That's that's there's so many different lines and lineages with yoga and, and doing the poses is just one part. A lot of it's about doing the poses or doing whatever you can so that you can be still and come into a meditative mind. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. I I started my yoga practice when a little bit after my second daughter was born. I have three girls and just and only now already so many years after I am understanding the process of how you know I call this embodiment how to through the body through you know doing these poses like you're saying the asanas the different the the, the variety of ways to that we're putting our bodies through like physical challenge how that you know how they say um I guess how you say bring your mat into your life so this is exactly what it is for me. It's like, it's, it's whatever challenges I'm overcoming on the mat. I, I, I notice myself when I, you know, when I come on after the class, how I'm able to be just more resilient, more patient, just more in my body present, you know, there with my kids when I read books to them, like, and just kind of like allow life to be felt um, on a completely different almost dimension right it's it's really it's really incredible that's why in my work i encourage all my clients to start a dedicated yoga practice because it does work absolutely yeah. so can we talk a little bit about uh some of your greatest challenges that you've overcome through the practice of yoga and also what advice can you give to you know to us <laughs> moms parents and you know and also maybe kids who may also feel challenged by you know very busy scheduled and just a very fast paced life yes so the uh, the concept of mindfulness and meditation we're actually very lucky to be living in a time where it's not so woo woo to even say those words. And um, a lot of doctors and schools and places uh, all across the world are, are bringing these practices in to their, their way of living and, um, and sharing it. So yoga is definitely a philosophy of some nature that, that is meant to be shared. And there are some of the teachings that certainly were ancient and sacred and secretive from the so they didn't want everyone to know that they can um, have awareness and, and make choices and be very illumined so that's why it was um, at a time a, a secret way to get to know yourself better because when people know who they are then they might question authority or question the way things are happening in the world and so now we happen to be very, very lucky and fortunate that our kids and us as parents and that the teachers are being exposed to mindfulness practices. And so when kids or we quiet our mind as parents and as people of society, we have a chance to go into our true self and into our true nature, which is really all about love 
and being in touch with that state. So coming into first self-love and body awareness and having that self-talk. So the conversations we have with ourselves are most important. So when we can change a little bit of how we think and it comes over time, I like to, uh, I, when I talk about the changes that evolved for me, it was about quieting that negative chatter. And when you replace it with, with very beautiful music, with mantra, it can be affirmations that are, some of them might be not familiar, like Sat Nam, which you mentioned earlier, Sat Nam is truth. And so if you keep repeating Sat Nam, Sat Nam, even if you don't know what it means, it's the, um, a lot of the words in Sanskrit are, it's like known to be the language of love. And so it's an ancient uh, technology and Satnam comes from the Gurmukhi tradition, which is aligned with, with the Kundalini tradition. And Kundalini, it's, it's all about um, awakening up dormant energy in your body. And so our children are, are being born into an age now, and my children as well, they came in at a time and were moving more and more into these shifts where kids are very wise and intuitive and maybe there was a time where that wouldn't have been allowed and so we have kids that sometimes could be labeled as one way or another way their behavior but it's really they're bursting with energy and they're very highly sensitive and so when we allow our true selves to come through and allow our kids to be in a way where they can shine their light on everyone where we uh it's like a give and take where the student becomes the teacher and the teacher becomes a student that's the same for our children because they are so light they know how to do that dance it's called leela in sanskrit that dance of of um, playfulness of being very organic in how they they are in their conversations and letting things roll off them so we can really learn from our children yeah so we begin to pay attention to our breath. And I will say that for many, many years, I said to my kids, uh, take a breath, or, or I would say something about breath, but it was before I studied myself, and it was before I studied the in-depth uh, technologies that come behind some of the yogic traditions. And um, I didn't really know what I was saying to them. So they possibly heard it and didn't really know what to do. But I will say that one day I was teaching at a school in, a, in, a, um, in an area where they wouldn't have yoga normally. It was a, a school that was, I was offering and I was teaching with kids where maybe English was a second language and they were really a highly, um, just a, a group that was hard to, uh, contain in the classroom and out of the classroom and, and the everyone was very surprised that the kids were listening and that they were you know using their breath and so one day after class this um, boy he was leaving and he was he was just like seemed a little frustrated and most of the class had left and and I said is everything okay and he said I'm having trouble getting my foot in my sneaker and so this was the first time I was truly exposed to something like this, where a child is wearing sneakers that are too tight and he really couldn't get his foot into the sneaker. And I was helping him along and unlacing the ties a little bit to make it so he could um, get past this challenge. And then I looked into his eyes and I said, let's practice this breath. But I said that to myself and I just looked at him and I said, the square breath, breathe in through your nose. Now hold the breath. Now exhale and hold the breath and breathe in again and hold the breath. And I guided him and he looked in my eyes and this frustration, he was in tears. And I realized this is the teaching. I might have taught this week after week in this class and taught the kids to inhale and pause and exhale and pause and turn it into a four part breath where you can breathe in for four and hold the breath and then exhale for four and hold the breath and so it's in these moments where 
the children can bring something like this home to their parents who are having a tough day. So it goes back and forth. Or maybe a friend is having a tough moment. And so that's the whole tradition of yoga. It's all about sharing it. It's not meant to be secret or sacred in a sense that you, you keep it for yourself, but it's that these little magical moments and getting through tough times, how do we get through it? We all have them. We have them with a, in, in every situation. And certainly the mom, as I know you're working with the, um, this, this whole series, the, the mother, and it's so true, we are the nurturers and we are the sustainers. We are both. We have that, that energy. It's, it's a polarity within us. It's not like male and female, but we do have those aspects of, um, of both sides in our body, like the sun and the moon, and we are part of uh, creation. And the world needs us. It needs us parents to stick together. It needs us women to keep shining. And, and so, yeah, yeah, bringing that conscious light. I, I agree with this. I personally see myself, and maybe this is, I don't know, like you said, woo-woo, but I see myself as the messenger of God. And so if, if God um, entrusted these souls in me, it's because he believes that I have what it takes to help them to succeed and thrive in, the, in life. But I cannot do this without feeling really good about myself right? So we spoke about self-love today. We spoke about this, you know, self-compassion and kindness. This has to start with the mom. That's why this podcast is called Health Begins With Mom, because it begins with us. You know, we can never expect our kids to do something that we ourselves not, we don't do, right? So you spoke about, you, you mentioned that story about the breath, right? You, you're telling your kids to take a take breath. A deep breath. I would take say a deep breath. Take Breath, take a deep breath, but right. I, I say that too. Right. I say that too. And then eventually I've realized that it's like, it's like I said nothing because why? Because I have not modeled it for them. And so now I really make it an, like I make an effort and I make it a priority to wake up an hour earlier and, and, you know, practice yoga in my bedroom so that they can, and I do not rush to put it all away because I want them deliberately to see me, right? Because only when they see you, you know, do the work and make the effort, only then they will, and, and also obviously they will see how that affects you and how you've, you're changing and how you're becoming more kind of in your body and more present, then and only then will they do what you do. Because they want, you know, I think children, because they're so connected to their truth, um, they don't have the years of the self bullshit that, you know, is, <laughs> is brainwashing all of us. Um, and they know, you know, and they gravitate towards it. That's why I feel like that's the reason why these kids are so open to it. It's because that's the truth and whatever is truth, you, you are open to it and you kind of, you literally inhale it. Absolutely. All right. So um, I also wanted you to talk a little bit about that program that you've created for uh, new yoga, yoga teachers. I mean, I think people in my community, um, I feel like a lot of them are in this process of self-discovery. And, you know, I talk about yoga all the time. And so maybe, you know, we have in, in our uh, audience a few who are maybe deciding or learning about yoga or who are interested in becoming yoga instructors. So can you talk a little bit about that program and also explain the purpose of this initiative? Sure. So the specific program that I'm working with is for people who have come out of a teacher training. So they have already taken that uh, decision to, to become a teacher. And um, for me, I decided to become a teacher when I was just thinking I wanted to go to classes more than, uh, more than the PTA meeting or how I wanted to be involved with the Parent Teacher Association. And I wanted to go to all of the events that were going on with, with, my kids and everything and around the holidays i i certainly wanted to contribute and keep going out and out and being very active however i was slowing down any self-awareness that 
things that were going on. So I always would go, I was going back and forth in stages with that. And so until I decided to do a teacher training, that's when I really committed to a yoga practice. Now, some people can, you know, find it their own way. For me, that the, taking a yoga teacher training was the next step in my life to master myself, although I had no idea what I was in for. So I will say that the majority of teacher trainings at yoga studios, if you start to go to a practice and you like where you're going and you find a place and they're offering a teacher training, then I highly recommend it because it is life altering. We uh, of the Western world are not exposed to some of these things. And a lot of the things that you learn are you wonder, wow, I could have done this. Uh, why don't they teach us in the schools? Or why didn't anyone ever tell me I'm perfect? Or why did I have such self doubt? And there's so many things about gossip and about taking um, so many of the ways that we're, we might live and not um, value in, in day-to-day living from all of our years of being brought up as people. So I do think that if a mother is a seeker and they're trying to seek more and they want more out of life, that a yoga t- teacher training, wherever you go, is one step. However, my program is for those people, they come out and they've learned some things. Maybe they're a teacher in a school, maybe they're a psychologist, maybe they're a stay-at-home mom. Maybe they did the teacher training just like myself, not necessarily to teach, but they had this calling that they wanted to find out more about the technology. And so what do you do with it afterwards? Because there are tons of yoga studios. Yogi Bhajan, one of the great teachers of Kundalini, he said that there would be a yoga studio on every corner. He did not want to have people looking at him like, you are my teacher. He wanted to make teachers. So we are in this time and age where a lot of yoga teachers are coming out into this world. And we need these peacemakers more than ever. And moms especially. If you can bring some of these, this wisdom to your family as you're nurturing them, and if you're, you feel that the movement to become a yoga teacher is something that would fuel you, it, it automatically happens. You, do, you start to teach in your child's school, you teach your kids at home, their friends are over. You don't push it, it just comes very naturally. And so one, but when you come out, you're not exactly sure what to do. So after you've done a teacher training, now some, some people, and it wouldn't necessarily be mothers, but they might go away to India or they go to uh, Costa Rica and they do a training in three, three weeks. Mm-hmm. But most people would do it. They, they have a family member and they can watch their kids on the weekends and you get it in and it might be over the course of a couple months. And so then you wonder to yourself, what can I do um, now that I've had this, this training? And, and there's a whole confidence thing that falls into play. And it just mirrors everything in life. Like I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. And I'm not worthy of this. Yes. And so, and then the yoga plate, wherever you did your training, let's say it's local. Some people might travel and do a training. Um, even if it's over a couple of months, they might travel and every weekend um, or once a month on a weekend go away. And, and you eventually get your hours, about 200 hours is what would be for um, a yoga teacher. Uh, to be certified with Yoga Alliance. And so, yes, they're kind of left at the doorstep and they don't know where to go. And so my message is, we have room for you and we need you. The world is all about um, recharging this negative balance. And so you can go um, and join my program once you're at this place. And then I have these jewels to Um, help with the self-love, the self-care, the support, because if you feel like you're left at the side street, so you have this training, but, oh, how can I get my first gig and where can I uh, go to teach? Where there's so many places. And I know a woman who was a, a hairdresser and for years I watched her. She was my hairdresser. And then I would think to myself, oh, she seems like a, a little bit Um, on edge at times, or maybe there was just something about her that I was sensing was bursting inside of her and she wasn't sure how to move her energy. And suddenly she did a yoga teacher training. So she ended up mirroring the, you know, being a teacher, a yoga teacher and, and being 
still a hairstylist and then you can like meld your your ways your lifestyle together and become more conscious so then you'd be you know more centered and and you know some of the self help books and there's great things out there but i will say that a yoga teacher training um, has the ability to break you open and when you're vulnerable you're more expressive more loving and so it's a great place to be to um, be a parent in these times of very harried times where things are very hectic and um, and to go into that self-discovery so yeah yeah i i totally love that so is the program online or is it um or is it the live program? Yes, it's online and it is, um, it's, in, it's in the process of being launched. So this is a very exciting time for me. I've been talking to yoga studio owners and yoga studio um, you have places that do teacher trainings and they're saying yes, they do. Now there's sometimes our mentorship programs and sometimes people go right into a 300 hour teacher training afterwards. So some places have things um, aligned where a, a, a new teacher um, has the opportunity to go, but at times they, they don't know where to go with their, with their new, um, newfound consciousness and, um, and, and they're, they're not confident. And so it's a lot about uh, the, the different styles of yoga that I've um, worked with and a lot of the trainings and meditation and a lot of the techniques to it's all about that self-care. So that reminder to have a sadhana, a daily practice. And I know you spoke beautifully about that. And, and of course there's, you know, you become your own teacher. And so that's, that's you, you can take it um, and initiate yourself if that's, that's the direction you're going in to be someone who is very much an observer of the mind. Yeah. Uh, we need a little reminder. Sometimes we get lost in whatever profession we're in and, um, I also, the, the workshops that I teach, they're, they're to come if somebody wants to uh, have me speak at a, a location, or, you know, whether it's schools or, or in businesses, there's, there's really no end to this. And that's the thing that I'm working with with the program is that uh, people can take their light everywhere and take what they know out into um, various arenas because there's so many places. In the beginning, I said, well, I'm only going to teach children because I that's what I was very connected with and then you know teachers said to me oh people are going to want to take your class I was like okay I guess I'll try it with adults too um, and so and I always say that you know the moment the students come in I, I feel like a student too so we're always exchanging that energy yes. of student teacher yeah it's so funny because I also started working with kids I started my career as a pediatric nutritionist and now I do this work with moms <laughs> because I've noticed that um Whatever you know is happening, and I've I've worked mostly with parents who are, who are struggling with picky eating, and so I've noticed that so many times it just keeps going back to the parents and mostly to the mom, right? And so I've realized that what am I doing? Like, why am I serving the wrong, you know, the wrong target market? Like, it's not kids; it's it's the moms who need the support. Absolutely. So I understand. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, this show is, it consists of two parts. So the first part is where we share, you know, when, where you share your expertise. And the second part of the interview is more, you know, when we go deeper into meeting you and it's sort of like more in-depth um, conversation with you. So are you open to that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so the first question is, um, this show is all about inspiring mothers to thrive as women, wives, and mothers. And I like to call it being a goddess in your life. And so I'm curious to know, how are you being a goddess in your own life? How do you take care of yourself, your soul, your body? What are some of your non-negotiables? I know yoga is one thing, and I know breath is the other. <laughs> so what are some other things that you do? Well, I would say one of the things that I live by and more so since I've been evolving as a yoga teacher is um, one of the great teachings is that nobody can take your peace away. Mm. So I, I, I do my best to instill that in myself and to um, just, just live up to that. So that's why I say gloom to gloom from that, um, from everything that might feel a little bit, you know, gloomy, then you can grow yourself. And so 
Um, so how quickly can I change my mindset? So I have this, you know, concept of three to five minutes, we can do these breathing practices that are amazing. And so I do them. And I, um, one that I've been using lately, it's a how to um, have a positive mood. And so I just learned this one a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's no, not so different than things I've been doing for years and years, but it is amazing. And so it's, you sip in the breath through your nose and in three strokes, and it can be three and up to seven strokes. And so I literally learned this just a few weeks ago. And then like on the way home, I did it from the yoga space that I was in. And then I realized I was driving to pick my daughter up and I was doing it in the car and I just started doing it. So it was like living these, these, these teachings. And so it's breathing in these, these strokes where it sounds like this, it's, three breaths in through the nose and then one exhale through the mouth, but like a sigh. Ah, and you just let it go. And so, and then sigh it out. Ah, and so I just found myself, it's, it's like contagious to me. I learn it and then I do it. So I'm driving in my car. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not causing any problems for anyone. I'm just breathing a little different and I'm calming down my thoughts. So that, you know, certainly you said, what is it? You do breath and meditation, but I'm just letting you know that it's, it's just kind of living through me. And I think yoga, we are all born as yogis, very pliable and movable. And we just each and every day have this potential to rebirth ourselves and retrain our mind. And so that is my life's work. That is, that's what I'm doing. I, um, I, I believe in sadhana, so a daily practice. So I always sit on my meditation seat in the morning. I might not do a traditional vinyasa flow or it depends what my body's asking for. Um, I might just ask for some silence. So I do a lot of different things as part of my ritual. And often it's mantra and often it's reciting very beautiful um, Sanskrit or Gurmukhi mantras to start my day and um, just vibrating with the, with positive affirmations. Yeah, love that. Uh, well, the second question is really about what is your vision for your life and what are you creating? I, I know you're, you've alluded a little bit to that, but I'm just curious to know, maybe in one sentence, what is it that you, what is your purpose? Uh, definitely my purpose is to bring my calm presence into a strong, powerful source of energy so that my field um, can be felt long distance. And so mm-hmm. that's, I've come up with this Yogi Whisperer and it's been, um, it's been handed to me by the grace of God. It's just, it definitely has been my calling. I have, since my kids were young, since I was a young child. I always wanted to help others, and and I definitely did it. I, I I was highly sensitive. I was very caring and kind, and and throughout my life had made um, always uh, an intention to reach out and keep in touch with my aunts and my uncles and my cousins. And, um, and so it started with family and with friends. I I know I was always a very good friend. However, I had a lot going on in my own mind that uh, did not allow me to be in control and to be strong and powerful. I was, I would say, a bit of a follower or just unsure of myself at times. And so now I'm taking it into the next realm. Since I've tapped into who I am, I'm going to continue to get to know myself better. And, and I always took care of others. But because I'm now taking care of myself, I know I can reach more people. And part of it, I even felt like I, people would say to me, you're such a good mother. Like my, my son had learning difficulties and I would take him to speech and to OT. And I was so patient with him when he would talk and he had, you know, did barely said a word until he was three. And I would think to myself, well, what else would I be? Would I not be patient or would I not take my child to these places? But the fact that people called that to my attention, I realized, well, maybe I do do things different. Maybe I am so kind and compassionate and people feel it. And then so through from what I've learned, I've now um, I've now had this vision to share 
share that nurturing way with others. I love that. That was more than I think you told me a line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so funny because, you know, I, what I see in my work is the older women get, um, the more connected they are to their purpose. Whereas when we are young and, you know, and it's so funny because when we are, most of us start being, you know, moms and get into parenthood when we're relatively young, right? So it, I don't know, it, for me, it started in my mid twenties. Um, I was not, I, I'm, I mean, I was so not the person I am right now. Like, I feel like as we age, we gain more wisdom and more grace. Um, and so this question is actually easier to answer as I think you get, go through, um, you know, the life trenches, I think. Yes, for sure. Okay, yeah. And so third question, what advice does your now mom self would have given to your pre mom self? Absolutely. So I have been thinking about this a lot and probably on and off. Uh, it comes to me because I'll question myself like, oh, wow, I wish I got certified you know, that year that I first got introduced to this beautiful Swedish woman at this kind of woo woo new agey place that, um, that I just happened to take a, a yoga class and she looks so relaxed and calm. And so the, um, so sometimes I'll say, wow, I wish I had, had really got it known that there were sacred teachings and that there was all this yogic wisdom. And, and so often people are, are starting yoga, which is fine for a little bit of exercise. And so, so the, um, I think I, I wanted something out of my kids at times that were different than what they were. And now I'm realizing that our children more and more are there for a purpose and they're they're placed in front of us like an obstacle or a challenge just like even our our relationship with our husband or our parents or with whoever we are interacting with in life that the challenges are not there to break you they're there to wake you up and so if i had known that earlier that um that some of the teachings they, they talk about um, that the yogis actually call on the problems because we want to see how we can master them. So like the bigger the problems, the better to see, you know, what's coming our way because you can have a to-do list and all these things planned in your day and then something comes your way and things go off course. And so the more that um, if I could have told my old self, like, it's okay that you didn't get everything done. Just sit on the floor and play with, play with the kids right now, or you know, maybe cancel something that you've overscheduled. It's more important to, uh, to have the times in nature. So I definitely brought my kids to the park and I definitely did a lot of things with them, but yeah, there's, there's even more. So I guess more of um, knowing the mind body connection is very, very important for kids because they, you know, they are carefree, but they also are getting the vibes from their external world. Um, oh, you know, Johnny's not sitting. Uh, and, and so then it keeps diminishing their quality of who they are. We don't, uh, one thing for sure, you don't want to overly um, coddle a child. So it's like one extreme to the other. You don't want to be on top of them as they grow and not let them um, you know, fall down and get hurt. So there's a lot of teachings about that, that, um, and I think, uh, you know, Americans, you know, they have their kids in strollers too long. They, they you know, rush to a child um, who has gotten hurt. And I've just met extraordinary people now who have shown me some of the, the way the, um, cultures, indigenous populations, um, where, you know, they just brush it off. And they, they don't get caught up in the things that, you know, with worry. And that really wasn't my thing to worry. But um, I think that as women and as mothers, that the, the less that we can place um, on our children, the more at ease we can be. Just let them, you know, let them blossom, let them shine, let them talk and you know be heard and and look at them in the eyes i mean i i really 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 um love that more than anything is to look at kids in the eyes and and maybe when my kids were young i wasn't doing it enough 
I don't know exactly. I can, I can certainly say I was busy. And when you entertain and when you like to have your friends come over and when you're planning kids' birthday parties, somehow you might um, lose the sense of, of that relationship moment to bond and play and be with your child because you're making everything look pretty on the outside when it's more about the um, the day-to-day -day just you know recognizing the little things that they say that, that are so sweet and, and innocent so yeah all right complete the sentence moms should in should invest in themselves because they can be the master of their own mind and set the tone they can live their dreams right i love that thank you i like to keep it real and show listeners that even though someone is an expert in one area they might be struggling with other things so what are some of your current challenges as a woman wife or a mother hmm. i'm still in the um the thrust of wanting to offer my advice and offer uh, little health tips and um, to the kids that might not want it. So my son, he said to me, mom, you have sent me so many things this past week. I'm not reading any of them. So this is my son that's 23 and he's really into the um, mind body connection and he's in finance now and graduated last year and he's doing great work. And and so I'll send him things on health and fitness. So I realized that it was one particular week I bombarded him and he literally told me, I'm not reading what you sent me. So this, ever since he said that, I haven't sent him anything. And he told me to wait. And when there's something really good to send it to him. And then I told him I have something for him. And he said, wait even another week. Cause I don't want to, you know, so, so it's like crossing that boundary of going over <laughs> overboard <laughs> and, um, and also wanting to, um, you know, help my kids make decisions and, and then stepping back and saying, okay, um, I'm not going to call the school, even though my daughter, you know, had some uh, medical issues going on in her life, my younger daughter, and, and I'm not going to call them this week because in the past, maybe I, I crossed that boundary. And so it's, it's, um, it's hard to pull back and to let your children evolve and and to to not continue that mothering advice thing yes so. <laughs> yeah yeah i think it all the fine line there <laughs> right i think it really goes back to uh just trusting just trusting them and trusting that they want what's best for them and what's right for them and that they are on their own journey right we cannot live for them so i i hear you totally there <laughs> i wish i wish i could just you know put the the right kind of food in my kids mouth but unfortunately it just is, i've realized you know that they just have to i guess get through some of the um, uh especially one of them who is pretty you know particular with food um you know she she i just realized i have to allow her to maybe get sick or feel not so good so that she can make that correlation in her head so i i totally understand where you're coming there so yeah. not every woman is a mother but every woman is a daughter so how do you think your relationship with your mom helped to shape who you are today hmm. that's a big one well my mother she definitely instilled a lot of things in me that are amazing and wonderful so i'm full of gratitude she was always showing her kindness and um and also as a connector with family and and um and so i think we take a lot from our mothers we take on a lot and then there was plenty of things that i said to myself oh i'm never going to do that I, i'm not going to be like my mother in that way or and so when you start to notice some of the things that you have um, acquired in your personality um so it would be my mom would always kind of look at me and say something to me like, oh, your hair would look nice pulled back in a ponytail, or your hair would, your hair's in your face, or why don't you put some lipstick on? So she would always say things like that to me. And she was, uh, I guess she was, she definitely had some part of her was a perfectionist. So um, I think my, she would have my underwear match my outfits and my handbags and purses. So 
she was very detailed. And so at times I'm rebellious and I like to be kind of so much of my carefree spirit and not necessarily be well groomed on certain days of the week. And certainly my yogic lifestyle has me be very free spirited. And I think it's from, you know, some of the, the ways of her, you know, eyeballing me and, and so there's this, there's this fine thing because then my kids will walk through the door and, or they're getting ready to go out and I'll just have my little like blush brush in my hand and I'll be putting a little blush on my daughter's cheek and I'll say put on a little lipstick. And I, you know, I think as parents, we like for our kids to, you know, shine. And I'm sure my mom saw my hair hanging in my face and was like, pull it back so, you know, so we can see you. So uh, my mom, you know, was really a good a good person. She lost her, and is a great person. She lost her mom at 16. So I think a lot of the things that she taught me were things that she didn't have um, and she wanted me to have. Um, so she, um, one thing she taught me was to never sew because that became something I think she always had to do. She was always mending, whether it was a clothes or helping in her family. So sometimes I would think to myself, well, I want to be better at sewing. I need to learn this. My mother, you know, didn't really want me to do it. So I think there was things that she tried to keep me safe and protected from so that I didn't have to um, have some of the hardships that she went through. Of course, um, as I mentioned before, sometimes having the hardships and problems, like you can't have someone always protecting you. So she was good at, you know, taking good care. And, um, and from that, I you know, have evolved. But I would say that we've definitely had um, our, she still, she says to me, and this is her new thing that she says to me, you never tell me anything about you. I, I didn't know you went skiing. I, I you're, you know, she'll say that my husband just sent her something. We had gone out um, on a trip and I guess I had mentioned I, I might not ski. She just had no idea that I was going to. And um, so she'll say, I don't call her enough. So she, she kind of, gets on my case about certain things. And I think to myself, why are you saying what I'm not doing? Why don't, when I call you, you say, it's good to hear from you. So, so it's kind of this little back and forth. It's a continued relationship that I'm always working out, um, you know, to kind of bite my tongue now and not um, speak my mind at times, um, you know, where at times in my life, uh, in our relationship, um, I think I would, you know, didn't have control of myself. I wasn't as much of a, a warrior of self-love, I didn't really even know about it. So I think mothers take a beating because kids will show their true color at times. And if they're upset, they call their mom. And then when the mom gives them advice, then they don't want it because that, you know, so it, it's kind of, that, that's been my relationship with my mom. I think, um, you know, it's, it's very much a, um, a work in progress. Yeah. I, I, I hear you there. I, I, I have a very similar relationship with my mom. It's like, yeah, I want her when I need her, but then when I, when she says something that I don't, that I don't like, that doesn't resonate with me, I kind of push her back. So it's like, <laughs> it's constantly, yeah, I guess that's the same relationship that, you know, that I, eventually that will happen for me with my own kids, right? I cannot expect them to always, you know, take what it is that I offer them with like full love. I have to accept the fact that they are their own people. They have their own journey and I just have to be willing to let it go. Yeah. So thank you so much, Marla. This has been so much fun. I love these deep conversations. I love that. That's, that's the reason why I started this podcast because I felt like I'm, it's missing in my life, you know, the, the, to be able to have really deep and meaningful conversations with women. And I think as moms, um, and I hear this, you know, my clients say that all the time, especially moms who are raising really small kids, you know, the need for just intellectual conversations to have, you know, an adult conversation, it's missing in so many of our lives. And so thank you for that. So before I let you go, where can people find you and connect with you? And also maybe you can uh, tell them where, you know, if some, some of our audience, some, somebody in our audience uh, is a yoga instructor or somebody who is studying to become a yoga instructor, where can they join the program that you've created? So now is the time for that. Okay. So I have a, um, a program that is getting ready to launch. So that's going to happen in June. And I'm looking for people to um, refer anyone to 
for starters I have for any yoga teachers, it's, a, it's called Conscious Connections and it's a Facebook group. So anyone who knows um, someone who is a yoga teacher, they can invite uh, someone um, to, to like that page and to get on. So that's Conscious Connections and that's more about just connecting because there's new teachers and old teachers and we can all learn from each other. And then um, I, marlasacks.com will bring you now to a page that, um, a, a web page that is uh, sort of being pulled apart. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll have that in full, uh, full gear. So you, you can find me, marlasacks.com, and I teach on Mondays at Naturally Yoga in Glen Rock. And that is 11.30 to 12.30. It's a gentle restorative yoga flow class sometimes the entire class we're on the floor sometimes we move up and we do some postures so i i can get different people it could be someone who's pregnant it could be somebody who just had an injury it could be somebody where the doctor said take yoga um it could be the teacher who's been practicing for years like all different levels students can come into that class and and especially if someone comes up to me and says you know, my knee is bothering me, or the doctor told me this or that, I will customize the class. Otherwise, I, I feel the energy of who is there, and, um, and I'm guided. So we'll, we'll often just drop, do a few poses, uh, and then do some stretching, and then drop into a meditation. It could be in the middle of the class. I like to use mantra, and, um, and I play the harmonium, which is a, um, sounds a little bit like an organ, and and it's very soothing in the beginning of the class and we bring an intention for and people. so and so this is in new jersey this is in new jersey and okay. so i that's in new jersey and i also have um another class on monday evenings in franklin lakes uh, new jersey so those are the two places um for anyone in new jersey it's 5 40 to 7 on on mondays and then i have this rotating schedule and i just uh, taught uh, this past weekend a spring awakening, bring action, bliss, and joy into your life, and to plant a seed um, for the new season of spring, which we've been waiting patiently for here on the East Coast. And so I love teaching on the seasons um, because we have the winter blues that comes into play, and there's great ways to manifest great, great things during that season, during um, you know, this time of things being dormant. So, so I'm working towards having workshops and retreats and bringing more things online and to go universal um, with the teachings uh, and so blogging and things of that nature. If you, you can find me on um, Facebook, you can see things that I'm doing and it's all about sharing that, that love vibration. So you can yeah. like me, my regular page, Marla Sachs. Um, you can find me and I also have a as I said, conscious connections for the new and the very seasoned yoga teachers and um, just be on the lookout. Awesome. So yes, I'll have all uh, the links that you've mentioned in the show notes below. Uh, the show is global, so it's not only for people okay. who live in New Jersey, but yeah. if somebody yeah. is local to New Jersey, please, you're welcome to go and check out yeah. some of Marla's classes. I think you're going you're gonna to be uh, in for a treat. So Instagram Marla... Also. Instagram, I have Instagram. the Marla Sachs Instagram. So I, awesome. I'll do little tips from time to time and, um, and they're very sweet. Thank offers. you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marla. Marla, this has been such a pleasure meeting you and connecting with you. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Thank you for listening to the Health Begins with Mom show. I love hearing from you, so please post your comments and questions over at healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash podcast. If you love the show, please share it on social media and in your real life with other moms who might enjoy this content. And if you have a burning question or topic you'd like me to hit on the show, just drop me a line at dorit at healthbeginswithmom.com. And if you love the show and really want to support it, please go to iTunes, write a review and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening and I'll catch you next time. Much love and many blessings.